Let's look at the properties of electromagnetic waves. So here's a plane wave. Okay, we saw a simulation for that. So let me go to that simulation again. Here is this plane wave. And you see the plane in which the electric field and the plane in which the magnetic field oscillate are mutually perpendicular to each other. And they're perpendicular to the direction of travel. So the electric field is perpendicular to the direction of travel. So the three quantities are mutually perpendicular. Okay, you guys might have heard of uh, polarization. So this is a plane polarized light and the plane in which the electric field oscillates, that's called the plane of polarization. Okay? So this is plane polarized light. <coughs> uh, when you go outside in the sun, sunlight is uh, unpolarized. So sunlight has all polarizations. So, okay. So what that means is, uh, so if you go out in the sunlight and if you're looking at a ray a beam of sunlight coming at you, it has all polarizations. Okay. So it's made of several light beams with all polarization. And if you wear polarized sunglasses, what the polarized sunglasses will do is it'll only let to one polarization and absorb the other polarization. So essentially what it does is if this beam is I, unfortunately we won't get into all of this, the intensity coming out of your, on the other side of the polarized sunglasses are half the intensity, even if the glasses are clear. So, and that's good for your eyes. All right, so we're looking at plain polarized light and you can stand anywhere in this beam and measure the electric field and the magnetic field. And it turns out that the strength of the electric field divided by the strength of the magnetic field is equal to the speed of light. So at every instant, the ratio of E and B is uh, C. Okay. So here are some of the properties of electromagnetic waves. Both E and B satisfy the wave equation. Okay, what is the wave equation again? Uh, So here's the three-dimensional wave equation. Okay. Uh, it's re relating the second order spatial derivative to a second order time derivative. We specialized, we looked at solutions in, uh, in one spatial dimension. So we looked at solutions where that depended only on X and T. So there was the wave equation, second order partial derivative with respect to X is equal to one over C squared times second order partial derivative with respect to time. So that's the wave equation. Yeah. So both E and B satisfy the wave equation. All electromagnetic waves in vacuum travel at three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Uh, so E and B fields are perpendicular to each other and they're perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So there's the ratio. And the electromagnetic waves obey the principle of superposition. What that means is, uh, so in the differential equation language, what that means is if E1 equal to E1 naught sine Kx minus omega T is a solution to this, to that wave equation and E2 is also a solution. This is also a solution, okay? So that's the superposition principle. All right, um, so that's what that means, okay. Now here are some values for electric and magnetic fields in a, in a typical uh, radio signal. So here's a 40 megahertz signal. Uh, you guys know that FM radio broadcasts around 100 megahertz, so this is 40 megahertz. The wavelength is about um, uh, the wavelength is about eight meters. So, for FM radio, which has a um, which has a frequency of about two and a half times this, the <coughs> the 
wavelength will be two and a half times less, which is uh, two and a half. So about three meters. Okay. Let me see. Do I have a question? Well, so you so here's a Joseph's question: Are you creating electricity without wind power? Um, again, there's no free lunch. It takes work to make this oscillate, and the work you're putting in is being converted to electromagnetic energy. Okay, so the work you're putting in got converted to electromagnetic energy. Anyway, so this oscillator is pumping energy into there so soon as you let's stop um, let's stop oscillating this thing and there as soon as you stop pumping energy there's no more electromagnetic wave all right so the electric field in this typical wave is the value of the electric field is 750 newton per coulomb or 750 volt per meter okay so if you stick an antenna out right there every meter um, if you stick a one meter antenna the potential difference between the antenna would be 750 volts okay the electric field strength would be that inside the uh, antenna okay and the magnetic field is uh, 10 to the minus 6 tesla that's about 100 the earth's magnetic field okay so those are the typical values okay all waves carry energy so electromagnetic waves carry energy too and you all knew this because you stand in the sunshine and you feel warm okay so the pointing vector tells you how much energy the rate at which energy is being carried so what the pointing vector does is let's um, go back to a blackboard so if uh, electromagnetic waves travel in that direction the energy per unit area one meter square oops one meter square so the energy per energy per meter square per second is given by the pointing vector and that's equal to one half e cross b okay. oops one not one half that's uh, mu naught e cross b okay so mu naught e cross b and that's what that is so the pointing vector it gives you how much energy is crossing one meter square of area per second okay so the rate of energy flow power per unit area intensity is given by the pointing vector of course uh, all generally what we are interested in is the average intensity the average pointing vector and you could take the time integral of this function over one cycle and what you get is that uh, average of sine square theta is one half over one period again that's what you get so the average pointing vector is uh, is okay is that that's the intensity of light so the intensity of uh, sunlight for instance as you know is 1400 watts per meter square above the surface of, uh, outside the atmosphere so so let's go to chalkboard. So the intensity of sunlight is 1400 watts per meter square. Okay. And remember, all that sunshine falling on Earth, if you only harvest one part in 15,000 of the energy falling, you'd satisfy all of mankind's energy needs. Okay. Anyway, so here is a, so imagine a beam of light. So 
So here's a beam of light. So this beam is traveling at the speed C, and here's a unit volume. So the rate at which energy flows is equal to this energy, energy per unit volume times the speed of light. And that's what this equation is saying. The intensity or the average, uh, the rate at which energy is flowing per unit time per second is equal to the speed of light times the energy density. So the energy density, the energy in this electric field and magnetic field per unit volume is given by this expression. So the energy density is uh, half epsilon naught E max square or B max square divided by two mu naught. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, anything that has energy has momentum as well. Okay. So radiation has momentum as well. And when you absorb, so just like uh, when a bullet is fired, a bullet has energy and momentum. And uh, let's say a bullet uh, lands into a wooden plank, it transfers momentum to the wooden plank, just like that. When light is absorbed, it transfers momentum as well. What this expression gives you is the momentum is if you, you absorb this much energy of radiation, the momentum uh, that was transferred to you was U divided by C. Okay. And if you, so a black surface will absorb electromagnetic radiation and so that much momentum is transferred. Whereas a, a light surface will reflect the radiation and when you reflect it, it's a perfect reflector, you transfer more momentum. So the momentum transferred to the perfect reflector is twice U times C. U is the energy absorbed. Okay. So uh, electromagnetic radiation can exert pressure. Okay. Pressure is force divided by area. Force is time rate of change of momentum from Newton's second law. So force is that divided by area. But momentum is U by C, U by C. Okay, so DU by DT divided by C. Okay, DU by DT divided by area is the pointing vector. That's the intensity. So the pressure is intensity divided by C. So again, uh, so, oops, so, let's, uh, so if you have a beam of light and you absorb the beam of light, the pressure exerted on you is the intensity divided by C, which is S average divided by C. That's if you absorb it. And if you reflect the light, then the pressure would be twice that. Okay. Right. So, and uh, so, so here's a demonstration of the radiation pressure. Okay. So here's a picture of a comet. Uh, now, when the comet comes to the close to the sun, uh, it's a ball of ice and uh, gas and dust. And when it close to the, comes to the sun, uh, some of that evaporates and it surrounds it. And some of that gets ionized as well. So this cloud of gas and dust has ionized gas and dust. And uh, so, okay, so here's that comment with the cloud of ionized gas here is the sun. Now the sun emits charged particles. Okay, this is the solar wind. And it emits electromagnetic radiation, of course. Okay. And the electromagnetic radiation is, uh, uh, is not charged, of course. All right, so Thank you, Emily, for watching. I'll be sending those ChemGo points to you later today. Thank you for streaming it. All right, of course. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Hello? I guess we're getting interference from some other meeting. All right, so here is the sun. The sun is elect emitting uh, charged particles and, uh, and light. So the comet, the ionized particles get repelled by the, uh, they get blown by the solar wind. So this is that tail of ionized gases and the radiation pressure blows away the dust trail, the neutral particles. So comet will have two tails. Okay. And solar sails also utilize the radiation pressure. So sunlight falling off, reflecting off the solar sail, pushes the solar sail. So you guys can go to that Wikipedia page and check it out. So here is the solar sail. All right, what we'll do is we'll pause now and we'll let you ask questions if you guys have any.